Michael, it really feels as if the service is largely all about the people who lost their lives in this plane crash. What I mean by that is that it's spread over a couple of hours, only about a half hour of that is about dignitary speaking. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Afterwards, it will move on to a musical performance by an Iranian music ensemble. And then the majority of the ceremony will be dedicated to friends of the people who died, getting up and commemorating them individually, those 13 people you spoke of who used to live in Edmonton. And informally, I guess that process has already started. We had just walked into this space when we were approached by a woman who said she was the Farsi Persian language teacher of one of the little girls who was on this airplane, nine-year-old Dorina Savi. And the teacher explained to us that one of the last words she had taught Dorina in Farsi was the word for airplane. And then she showed us a notepad where you could see Dorina had drawn the picture of an airplane after she had learned that word. And you could see she had drawn the plane crashing as what the teacher told us was supposed to be a joke. So it's very heavy here. A lot of people just sort of still taking in everything that's happened to their friends and family. This stadium is packed. We keep hearing PA announcements asking people to sort of raise their hands if there's an empty space next to them to make sure that everyone can actually sit down here today. Well, certainly people want to come together and grieve and honor those lives that have been lost. And when you speak of that little girl, what a horrific foreshadowing of what happened to her in life. Uh, as we say, a number of dignitaries will be a part of this vigil, among them the Prime Minister. What is the expectation there, Rafi? Well, given that at least 13 people who were on this plane were from the Edmonton area, I think it's safe to say the expectation was about when the Prime Minister would show up, not if. Justin Trudeau has been making almost daily appearances in Ottawa. He's shown up in Toronto at similar events, and so people just wanted him to be here. He'll be speaking alongside with Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Edmonton Mayor Don Iveson, the president of the University of Alberta, Dan Turpin. And, you know, I was speaking to one of the friends of the victims and asking them, what can these words bring to you? I mean, is there anything they can say that that can help here? And, and she said, you know what, it's nice to just have them be present and have them deliver words of comfort. Anything will help, basically, at this point, Michael. Okay, Rafi, uh, thank you for that. Or Rafi Bujikanian at the site of this afternoon's vigil in Edmonton. Now, as we heard from Rafi, and as we've been telling you throughout this weekend, the disaster of Flight 752 certainly had a disproportionate impact on Edmonton's Iranian community. And that's because, as we've said, 57 Canadians on board that flight were Canadian. 13 of them were from Edmonton, many of them having ties to the University of Alberta. Now, some of the victims were professors, others were students, but every one of them was making their community a better place. And with that, we want to bring in Natasha Fata because she's been looking into the personal stories. She joins us right now. And as, as we say, disproportionate and also so tragic because these were people that were actively making contributions to this country. That's right, Michael. And in the highest institutions of learning. And right now our focus is on the University of Alberta because, of course, um, this very moving vigil is taking place in Edmonton. But it's so profoundly... Uh, inspiring in a way to see the types of individuals that sadly Canada and the world lost because they were contributors to the world, the world of biochemistry, engineering, psychiatry. These were brilliant, brilliant people um, and really a sense of community, a sense of a public purpose was being demonstrated. So let's go through some of the individuals and their stories, beginning with a family of four that all lost their lives. If we can show you a picture of Pedro Musavi and his wife, Mojan Danishmand. Now they are the husband and wife, both of them engineering professors at the University of Alberta. You'll notice pictures there of two little girls. Those are their daughters, 14-year-old Daria and 9-year-old Darina, 
all four family members were killed in that crash. Now, it, it's so cruel because both um, Musavi and Danishmand had um, spent a lot of time at the university, not only helping their own students and their own members of their faculty and their own institution of learning, but they really wanted a diverse representation within engineering. In fact, Badram, the, the husband, worked very hard to get uh, women involved in engineering, and he was a big advocate for diversity on the school, so uh, a loss certainly being felt there. So you have a family that's formed, that's contributing to society, and then let me show you uh, the next couple that we want to talk about. Um, this really heartbreaking story of Pune Gorji and Arash Pur Zebari. Newly married couple, just got married on January the 1st. They went to Iran to get married. They're both students at the, the university in Edmonton, a very highly accomplished. And so they said, okay, we've fallen in love here. We're going to build our life in Canada. Let's go to Iran. Let's start 2020 together as a married couple. They get married. They're planning on returning to complete their studies and get their lives going as a newly married couple. And they unfortunately both die in that crash and it's so heartbreaking because on her Facebook page Michael there were these beautiful pictures of her in a white dress the glowing bride and the the comments went from being congratulations you look so glamorous to we miss you we're so sorry we can't believe we've lost someone so moving and it's so sad because when you look at their photographs that have been shared on f social media of their wedding of their time together they were just so happy they really were so young so full of promise and as you say coming together to build a new life Futures ahead of them, there were no limits. You had successfully come to Canada. You had successfully found love. You got married. Everything was moving forward in the right direction. Um, I'll continue to tell you a few stories. I'm going to actually jump in there. Okay, and sure. We do want to hear more stories, but as we say, a number of dignitaries will be taking part in this vigil. And as people can see at home, entering right now into the sports center is Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister, to the left and now to the right. His back facing us right now is, of course, Jason Kenney, the Alberta Premier, which seems to, of course, indicate, and that's actually Don Iveson uh, standing there, the one person who remains standing to the right of the screen, that is Don Iveson, the Mayor of Edmonton. And and as you say, uh, Natasha, a number of lives that we are remembering, uh, again, we're waiting for this vigil to actually begin in earnest. But as we do, let's share a bit more of the stories here because we are here to celebrate the lives of the people who perished. And as I say that, I'm going to hesitate once again because walking up to the podium right now, this is Pega Solari. And we actually spoke to her a little earlier today. She is the MC of this event. She will begin the official portion of this vigil which will last for about two hours and I want to tell people at home that we're going to have this vigil for them in totality. We are not going to interrupt what we're going to see from the Community Sports Centre at this point but as we can see uh, Pega right now is waiting for her signals. Let us take a listen to the vigil in Edmonton. Canadian National Anthem and remain standing for a minute of silence in honour of the cherished people we have lost <clears throat> afterwards. Thank you. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. Carton bras et porte le for one minute.
please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, families, colleagues, partners, loved ones, thank you for coming today. We are gathered on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional lands of First Nations and Métis people. Mihmanan Aziz, Khosh Amadid. I'm Pega Solari, an MBA graduate of the University of Alberta and a resident of Edmonton since 2006. I am here today as a volunteer for the Iranian community in Edmonton. With us today are several dignitaries. The Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. The Honorable Francois-Philippe Champagne, Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Honorable Jason Kenney, Premier of Alberta. Heather McPherson, Member of Parliament for Edmonton Strathcona. His Worship, Don Iveson, Mayor of the City of Edmonton. Dr. David Turpin, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta. And several other representatives of federal, provincial, and municipal governments. That you have all joined us today means a tremendous amount to all of us gathered here. The Iranian-Canadian community, the City of Edmonton, and the University have all come together to make this memorial possible. Your presence reminds us that our grief is shared across the province and Canada. Thank you for being with us. A total of 176 people were on Flight 752, 82 from Iran, 63 from Canada, 11 from Ukraine, 10 from Sweden, 7 from Afghanistan, and 3 from the United Kingdom. I'd like to take this opportunity to honor the memory of all the victims of this tragic event. Our deepest condolences go out to the families and friends of all these people who have lost their lives. I'd also like to express our deepest gratitude in the Iranian community to the University of Alberta and their competent team for making today's memorial possible and for being extremely supportive and understanding throughout the process. The last few days have been very difficult for all Edmontonians. The staff at the U of A went above and beyond to support our volunteers from the Iranian community in the process of organizing this event. Before I invite our first speaker, I'd like to say to all of you volunteers, thank you. Today we'll hear from several speakers. First, our dignitaries will say a few words, and then members of our community will pay tribute to the lives of the cherished individuals we have lost. Alongside many joyful memories, I know that today will also bring sorrow. For anyone who needs support at any time today, there are grief counselors available in the boardroom, outside of the gym, across the hall. I'd also like to note that there are emergency exits at the southeast and southwest corners of the gym on the ground floor, and exit on both floors at the northeast and northwest corners. If you have not yet turned your cell phone silent, please do so now. Today's memorial will be webcast, recorded, and photographed by various media, and let me take a moment to welcome everyone who is joining us on live stream. Now I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. David Turpin, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta.
Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Kenny, Mayor Iveson, government representatives, members of the Iranian Canadian Edmonton and University of Alberta communities, family, friends, and colleagues, welcome. I cannot thank you enough for coming today and supporting each other in our sorrow and grief. So many individuals and community organizations have reached out to lend their support and sympathy, and I want to thank all of them today. This week has been a powerful reminder that the University of Alberta, the City of Edmonton, and Canada are part of an interconnected world. Early one morning, we wake to the news of a tragedy unfolding half a world away. And within minutes, we begin to realize that the University of Alberta, the City of Edmonton, and Canada have suffered one of their gravest losses ever. Among the women, men, and children aboard Ukrainian Airlines Flight 752 were members of our communities. They were our family. They were our students, faculty, and alumni. They were our friends and our colleagues. That an event taking place so far away could have such an impact on the University of Alberta and Edmonton is the result of a long history of connection between Iranian students and our university. A connection that dates back more than four decades to the 1970s. It was then that Iranian students began to come to the University of Alberta to further their studies. Many of them, many of you, stayed and inspired more to follow in your footsteps. A generation later, the number of students coming to our campus began to double, triple, quadruple, growing from only a few dozen in the early part of this century to nearly 500 today. This gathering is a testament to that history and to the depth of the connection between the University of Alberta and the Iranian-Canadian community. This story is not unique to us. Universities across the country have also lost students, faculty, and alumni in the tragedy. Canada has lost a tremendous body of talented, innovative, and entrepreneurial people eager to make our universities, our cities, our provinces, our country, and the world a better place for all. The individuals lost to us were smart, creative thinkers and leaders. Some were at the height of their careers, others only just beginning to unleash their potential. We will learn today about their contributions to the advancement of knowledge, especially in the fields of engineering, computer science, biological sciences, medicine and business. They were problem solvers, innovators, aspiring entrepreneurs and community leaders, both on our campuses and off. Over the past few days, as I have spent time with their colleagues and friends, I came to know them a little better. What has struck me most is not just that these were brilliant individuals, researchers and students, Rather, the sorrow and grief that I have witnessed this week tells me that these individuals were kind, generous, and compassionate. They were exceptional educators in the very best sense, whether they shared their passion for knowledge from the front of a classroom, took extra time to mentor students, or helped a friend struggling with school homework. They opened their homes to others. They always had a word of encouragement. They cared about the success of others and they inspired others to be their best selves. These are the kinds of people that no community can do without and the loss we feel today is profound. Let us honor them by following the example that they set. 
I want to thank the Iranian Canadian community for all that you have done to make this day possible. Thank you to everyone near and far who have sent heartfelt messages and condolences. The fact that we have faced this terrible tragedy together has consoled me in the midst of deep sorrow. Indeed, during a very dark week, our coming together has been a powerful reminder of how blessed we are to be part of a great global community right here in Edmonton, striving to support each other and care for one another. Today, let each and every one of us make a solemn commitment to channel our grief and our pain and work together to make the world a better place. Let this be their enduring legacy. Thank you, Dr. Turpin. I'd like to invite our next speaker to the podium, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Thank you all for gathering here in this moment of national pain. I want to thank Premier Kenny and Mayor Iverson and the organizers of the event, including the University of Alberta. I want to thank all of you who came out to show your support and care for the families and for the entire community. And I want to thank the families and friends of those we lost for being here this afternoon to allow us all to be with you and share our love for you in this time of deep, unimaginable, personal grief. Across this great country, we stand united together in this time of sorrow. All Canadians were heartbroken to hear that Ukrainian International Airlines Flight 752 had crashed. All Canadians were shocked and outraged to learn that it had been brought down by an Iranian missile. This tragedy struck our Iranian-Canadian community, leaving cities like Edmonton reeling. But this was truly a Canadian tragedy. All Canadians are mourning your loss. I had a chance to meet with some families over the course of the past few days. And to be perfectly honest with you, I wish I could adequately share with you what I was privileged to hear. Sitting with these families while they talked about their loved ones, learning who they were, what they loved to do, what their plans were for the future, was gut-wrenching. A husband who'd lost his wife and son, a vibrant 10-year-old who was confident he'd one day be prime minister of this country he loved so much. The extended family of a man who scrabbled and studied to realize his dream of going from being a successful dentist in Iran to starting a new practice here in Canada. Over the past few years, he had to return regularly to Iran for months at a time to work to pay for his courses here in Canada while his young family missed him dearly. He received his qualifications only weeks ago. And was finally coming here for good to build the best possible future for his kids except that he was on that flight. And now his family has no idea 
what their future holds without him. Friends, colleagues, professors and students here at the U of A grappling to make sense of the brilliant minds taken from us, the careers of knowledge and teaching and innovation cut tragically short. A devoted dad raising his teenage son on his own, bewildered about what life means now that his boy was taken from him. Family after family, mourning the loss of a loved one who was not just shaping their own lives, but building this country. Every single one of those 57 stories those 138 stories, those 176 stories, was one of hope, of strength, of confidence in a better future, a future we all share that is now diminished. 176 lives were extinguished in the space of a few minutes last Wednesday morning, but countless more victims all around the world, all across Canada, will suffer for years to come. Children, parents, siblings, friends, partners, who will now have to rebuild their lives after immeasurable loss. You may feel unbearably lonely that you are not alone. Your entire country stands with you tonight, tomorrow, and in all the years to come. We will build that future they all dreamed of together. That's what Canada is. Lorsque le vol 752 a été abattu, les familles ont perdu ce qu'ils aimaient et notre pays and our country lost their contribution. It's a national tragedy. The whole country is mourning. While no words can ease the pain, the grief, the outrage, it is my sincere hope that you can find some comfort in knowing that all Canadians stand with you. That is what makes us strong. I am so deeply sorry for your loss. This tragedy should never have occurred, and I want to assure you that you have my full support during this extraordinarily difficult time. But I also want you to know how grateful we are for you who are still with us. I want you to know that in your darkest moment and ours, you give us strength to stand together as a nation. You give us purpose to pursue justice and accountability for you. We will continue to work with our partners to ensure that a full, transparent investigation is conducted. I want to assure all families and all Canadians we will not rest until there are answers. We will not rest until there is justice and accountability. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now I would like to welcome our next speaker, the Honourable Jason Kenney, Premier of Alberta. Thank you, Dr. Turpin and the University of Alberta community for hosting us here today. Thank you to the Edmonton Iranian community for coming together and to lead us in this moment of shared grief. 
Thank you, Prime Minister and Minister Champagne, for making the extraordinary effort to be with us today to underscore the solidarity of the government and the people of Canada as this community grieves in such a profound way. Last Wednesday was one of the most tragic days in the history of this province, one of the largest single losses of life in our time as a community. And so it is fitting and necessary that we come together, people of so many origins, faith traditions, people from all across the world who together here as Canadians, and so many of you as members of the University of Alberta community, share this moment of grief. So many innocents with so much more to contribute to our community, now gone, leaving inconsolable pain in the hearts of their loved ones and a deep well of sadness and loss shared by all who knew them. Their personal stories collectively speak of the best and brightest in our community. Dedicated, dedicated educators, successful professionals, uh, talented entrepreneurs, gifted students, loving couples, parents, and children. Tributes are still pouring in, and it is clear that the victims were regarded with universal affection and respect by their colleagues, friends, and neighbors, no less so than here at the University of Alberta, which has been so deeply affected. Greater Edmonton is a city of just over a million people, and it is in many ways yet a small town with the interconnectedness of its communities and the welcoming nature of its institutions like this great university. This sense of intimacy, of shared experience, has been deeply apparent among Edmontonians in the wake of this atrocity. It is startling how many can cite direct or indirect connections to the victims who have been lost. And everyone shares the understanding that this, that this city and our province suffered a terrible loss. Whether their lives were taken by incompetence, by accident or by design, we know that everyone on board that plane were victims of a chain of actions rooted in the all too human failure to resolve conflicts peacefully. Prime Minister, we have confidence that you and the Government of Canada will do everything within your power, working with the international community, to get answers, to learn what really caused this appalling destruction of innocent lives. Throughout our history, Canada, Alberta, and Edmonton have provided sanctuary for countless people seeking refuge and seeking new beginnings including many of the 15,000 Canadians of Iranian origin living in Alberta today. And let me pay, say a word of tribute to that community, a community that has made an oversized contribution to the prosperity and vitality, the dynamism of this province and this country, a community of extraordinary intellect a culture of education which is demonstrated by the large and growing Persian presence here at the University of Alberta and one of the greatest ways in which the legacy of those whose lives were taken can be projected into the future will be to build Dr. Turpin on the, the brilliant presence of the Iranian Canadian researchers, academics, students and professors at this place. Thus, it is all the more tragic that the dozens of Persian Canadians aboard flight PS752, having known the peace and security of living here, were claimed by violence during a visit to their land of origin. Moments such as this remind us how precious and how fragile peace and pluralism are. And so we are gathered today in one of the most ethnoculturally diverse cities on earth, 
mourning members of one community in particular within our multitudes who, even amongst themselves, hew to different faith traditions. On a day like today, even as we grieve for the enormous losses of our community, we should look around this room at our diversity, at our shared civility, at our tolerance and compassion for each other and celebrate what we have built as Canadians from all backgrounds. We should resolve to remember the people that have been lost as exemplars of these Canadian virtues and to tell the world of the vast human potential that was erased by an epic demonstration of human folly last week. And we resolve to honor their legacy in the future. And so on behalf of the government and the people of Alberta, I wish to express our deepest condolences to the loved ones who have been left behind and to pay homage to the victims of Flight 752 and their families and friends. In Shakespeare's great tragedy, Romeo and Juliet, there's a sentiment that captures our cold January sorrow for the loved ones we have lost. Death lies on them like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flowers of all the field. May God rest their innocent souls and may, may light perpetual shine upon them. Thank you, Premier. I'd now like to invite His Worship, Don Iveson, Mayor of Edmonton, to the podium. Prime Minister, Premier, President Turpin, Fellow Edmontonians united in our grief. The very fact that this gathering is overflowing its capacity itself lifts our spirits and speaks to who we are as Edmontonians. Thousands from all walks of life have braved a cold January day to honor and celebrate the lives of our fellow Edmontonians. And this warms all of our hearts. I couldn't be prouder of our city and of this turnout, and most of all, how Edmontonians have responded to this tragedy all week. Within hours, of the tragic news, we heard about communities springing into action, including not just planning today's commemoration and raising relief funds, but beginning immediately to share the stories of those lives lost with the world and make real the staggering number of lives lost with faces and with names and with memories. And so for family and for friends and for colleagues of the victims, the tragedies are immediate and they are personal. And on behalf of my city council colleagues and the people of Edmonton, we are so sorry for your loss. But in a community like this, each and every Edmontonian is but one degree of separation from each other. We share the same streets, the same shops, the same workplaces, the same recreation centers, the same schools. And so it hits us because we can easily conceive of how we might be connected to these people that are suddenly gone, even if we never had the pleasure of knowing them directly. And so we are all here, friends of friends. And we love them as friends because we share community. And we can easily conceive of how interrelated by space and by webs of study and worship and commerce and joy, and today, by grief. 
But whenever tested by tragedy or disaster, Edmontonians do what comes naturally to us. We rally around our families, our neighbors, our friends, and our fellow Edmontonians, and our fellow Canadians, and we provide comfort, just as we're doing here today, because we know we are all connected. And so to those of you who have, who have lost loved ones, you are not alone here in this city. You have the sympathy and the embrace and the support of a million of your fellow Edmontonians and far, far beyond. At City Hall, we have received an outpouring of expressions of sympathies from across our region, from across this country, and from around the world. And this proves that this feeling of interconnectedness, of being friends of friends here, of all being related, can transcend one city and can transcend one country. We can also know this by the simple fact that the tragedy struck not here, but far away in Iran, and yet still strikes home here, and in Winnipeg, and in Vancouver, and in Halifax, and in Montreal, and Toronto, and Ukraine, and Germany, and Afghanistan, and Sweden, and beyond. It is a somber but important reminder that we're global citizens as well as Edmontonians. And during times like this, we're reminded of the importance of upholding universal and enduring values like truth, compassion, justice, and love. Because we know all too well the pain that accompanies rupture and injury to these values. And anger is a perfectly normal first response when we encounter obfuscation, aggression, injustice, or hatred. Our human calling, though, is to find a way to respond according to the highest expression of our values. And this is why we should always continue to work towards peace and why we should be invested in what happens, not just to our neighbors here, but far and everywhere when injustice or aggression is felt. Because when any person or community suffers, the whole human community is affected. We are all friends of friends. And I believe this felt interconnectedness is why Edmontonians continue to manifest these universal values in our modest Canadian way. But it's also why we cherish our loved ones, our friends, and even our neighbors who we've never met, who come from all over the world. Each life counts. Each life counts. But it must be noted that among these women and men and children, we mourn today. We're some of our very brightest and most impactful minds, drawn here by these Canadian values and by the welcoming and opening of openness of this city and by the wellspring of discovery that is our University of Alberta. And so this tragedy is even deeper for the loss of knowledge and impact and potential for our city and for our university. And I want to thank President Turpin and the whole university community for their compassion and for, this, and for their leadership in this extraordinary time of grief. We are committed to continue to work together to support the grieving and the healing process for family, friends, and community members. Nowruz, the Persian New Year, has always been one of my favorite community events. And while it will be harder for many this year, I plan on being there alongside our friends in the months to come as the grieving process unfolds. And I encourage Edmontonians to be with our grieving friends in your own way. Be there with them. Be there with them to listen, to comfort, to share stories, to celebrate the rich lives lived. It can be hard to find meaning in times of tragedy, but let us 
find meaning in the difference they made and the light that their lives shone during their all too brief time with us here. And I hope that you can seek comfort in this as I have uh, to quote from Rumi, a 13th century Persian poet. Goodbyes are only for those who love with their eyes because for those who love with heart and soul, there is no such thing as separation. And finally, man dar dardo andu ye shoma sharik hasta. I share in your pain and your sadness. Mamnoon. Mamnoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Now we will hear from two representatives of the student community at the U of A. Fahed Elian, President of the Graduate Students Association, and Jared Larson, Vice President of Student Life with Students Union. Hello everyone. Like all of you, I stand here today with feelings of sadness and sorrow, with pain and with a broken heart. I stand here out of respect for those who we lost in this tragedy. Yet these last few days, I haven't been standing, but sitting, weighted down by my emotions. I sit as the emotions of grief wash over me. I sit with confusion, shock, anger, and the hopeless agonizing pain of loss as the unsutured wounds of bereavement are torn open by the stories I hear day after day. I sit with denial as I imagine my friends, my peers, and my colleagues, Pune, Alumnas, Arash, Amir, and Nassim cross the stage to receive their graduate degrees with distinction. I imagine them sharing tea with their families, landing safely in Kiev, sharing stories of, of their travels, and joining again, safely, our family of scholars at the University of Alberta. And I imagine the stories we will long for, the stories of a global research, of marriage, of graduation, of the game-winning soccer goal. Dorina, one of the daughters of professors Pedram and Moshgan played on a soccer team coached by one of my close friends. And I imagined the empty locker where she once hung her jersey and the empty space she once filled on their soccer field. And I sit with the callous realization that the spaces that our loved ones once occupied are not yet empty, but filled with their memory. In the weeks and months that will come, these spaces will be filled, and we will all go back to our routine lives. But the legacy of our community members will continue to hold space in our minds and in our memories. The people we lost enriched and impacted our community beyond the boundaries of our campuses. They brought joy, love, warmth, and knowledge to all whose lives they touched. They were flying towards their dreams of a better life, a better future, of a better world, and their dreams were shut down. They left this world unintentionally. And I hope, I hope and I wish that we can carry with intention their spirits and their dreams, and that we leave space for their memory. I share my deepest condolences to those who are impacted by this tragedy. May they forever rest in peace. Thank you.
Hello everyone. It is with great sorrow that I stand here before you today. Over the past few days since the accident, I have watched and felt our community grieve and mourn by the loss of our beloved community members. And while there are no perfect words or sentiments that can possibly fill the void in our hearts left by those who are no longer with us, although I pray that we hold and cherish these moments of them dearly, let their lives and contributions to the community live on in our hearts and in our memories. As we're all here today to pay respects and commemorate the lives of our family members, peers, colleagues, friends, and faculty, may I urge you please to all hold on to these memories and the time shared. Let us not remember everyone memorialized today as solely victims of this heartbreaking tragedy, but as worldly scholars who provided insight and knowledge to the community that will outlive us all. As the days have passed since the accident, I have felt washed over with emotions of shock, confusion, anger, and sadness. And as I listen to the stories from students closely impacted and read countless news articles, I can't help but wonder why this happened and what purpose this tragedy has in our world. And I, I as much as we, will always have these questions and may never find the answers. But this accident has and can, will continue to leave a hole in all of our hearts. In the weeks and months to come, as we grieve and mourn the loss of our beloved community members, I implore you all to please take the time to speak and connect with loved ones, seek support from services at the university and in the community, and allow yourselves the time needed to begin healing from these wounds. As we can see from everyone in attendance today and the others watching from where they may be on the live screen, we can tell that we are not alone in this. There is a community of support around us and to please connect with your loved ones and heal together because it's going to take time, but you are supported and you are loved and there is hope. Now I wish to share my deepest condolences on behalf of the Students' Union and personally and may everybody impacted by this tragedy forever rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Fahed and Jared. I'd now like to introduce Mahdi Mudrizadeh and Farhad Khosravi, here to perform the classical Persian song, Karevan, composed by Murtaza Mahjubi and originally sung by Banan. شب نالم چون که غمی دارم که غمی دارم دل و جان بردی نشدی با ما بودی بی ما رفتی کجا رفتی تنها ماندم تنها رفتی چ 
چو کاروان رود فقان من زمین بر آسمان رود دور از یارم خون می بارم فتادم از پا سیر عشقم چنان که دانی رهای از غم نمی توانم تو چاره ای کن که می توانی چون ستار از مشگانم عشق آتشین ریزد چو کاروان رود فقانم از زمین بر آسمان رود دور از یارم خون می بارم نه حریفی تا با او نه امیدی در خاطر که تو را جویم ای شادی جان سر به روان که از بر ما رفتی از محفل ما چون دل ما سوی کجا رفتی از دیده ما رفتی 
Thank you, Mahdi and Farhad, for your touching performance. For the next portion of our program, we will invite family members, friends, partners, and loved ones to pay tribute to the cherished individuals we have lost. Here to honor the life of Pedram Musavi, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, is Yegane Molaze. I thank you all for being here today. Pedro, Mojgan, Daria, and Dorina were my second family. My family away from home. So full of life and always smiling. Sorry. They treated everyone around them with love and kindness. Daria and Dorina were like my little sisters, the most incredible girls I ever knew. They were so smart, hardworking, compassionate, and always with a smile on their face, even when arguing for the remote. Dorina would have turned 10 in March, and Daria just turned 14 this day one month ago. The world has lost two of the most beautiful souls. They had so much potential and so many dreams and goals of making this place a better world. You both brought so much light and happiness into my life, and I am so blessed to have known you and so grateful for all the memories that we created. Mojgan was like my second mom. She had this magical spark where whenever you saw her, it seemed like all your problems faded away. She had a heart of gold. She left me a voice memo right before her flight asking me to come by her office more, check up on me, bring me food, just keep an eye on me in general. She was the most amazing and loving woman I have ever known. She was a role model to me and an inspiration to so many. She was an angel in disguise. Pedro was the sweetest person and always ready to cheer anybody up. He helped so many excel in what they loved. He was encouraging and supportive. No matter what mistake was ever made, he stood behind his students, his friends, and family. He truly had a talent of making every single person around him smile and laugh immediately. They were blessings to this world, and it's so heartbreaking to have lost them so soon. We love and miss you greatly and hope you are in a better place. As well, unfortunately, since Pedram's sister could not be here with us today, she has asked me to share a few of her words with you all. So the following is a eulogy that she has written. Dear friends, this past Christmas, I celebrated 15 years of starting a new life after moving from Iran to Canada. I was proud of all I had accomplished and all the dreams that came true for me. This was all made possible by two angels in my life, my brother Pedram and my sister-in-law Mojgan, the brightest and most wonderful couple I know. In 2004, they took me in, into their small apartment in Waterloo, with open arms, wide smiles, and big hearts. They took in the 24-year-old me and taught me many life lessons. Much of what I am today is because of them. On December 12, 2005, about a year after my arrival, we were surprised by the early birth of Daria. Immediately, we knew she would take after Pedram, smart, witty, but in a hurry and impatient. Five years later, on March 10, 2010, Dorina was born. The same day I got my first job. Dorina had brought good luck and joy with her. Her sweet, lovely face, calm manner, kindness and curiosity mirrored that of Morshkan. My heart aches for the bright lives they had ahead of them and that they didn't get to live. Pedram and Morshkan were so great together, 
When they got married about 20 years ago, it was as though Mojgan had always been a part of our family, and Mojgan's family felt the same about Pedro. They belonged together, always thinking along a similar path and on the same wavelength. No pun intended. Research, strategy, papers, conferences, high-tech stuff that I never understood were their regular dinnertime conversations, and they enjoyed it so much. Their work was their passion. This community knows all about what they have accomplished, the impact they have had on advancing sciences, and their efforts towards raising the next generation of scientists. They had big dreams, and they were on their way of making those dreams into a reality. They were the only people who could. I had some doubts when they began learning a few musical instruments, but to my surprise, they had artistic sides too. They were proud Canadians and fond of its diverse culture, loved living and teaching in Edmonton, enjoyed working at the University of Alberta immensely, and cherished their colleagues and friends. They were full of life. Pedron was always making jokes and Mojgan was always laughing, though not always at his jokes. They instantly made friends wherever they went. They were warm, friendly, knowledgeable, approachable, and trustworthy people. Everybody valued and sought their opinion. They were always there for family and friends. The last time that we saw each other was during a trip to London in June of 2019 to celebrate my engagement with my fiancé, Chris. Despite the long way and busy schedules, they made an effort to congratulate us in person and even brought gifts. So kind-hearted and generous. On January 8th, our families were devastated by the tragic and unexpected loss of our beloved Petrom, Mojgan, Daria, and Dorina. The kindest and smartest people we know. They left us so soon and took a piece of us with them. We are left with the wonderful memories they created and the impact they have had on our lives. On behalf of both Musavi and Donishman families, I'd like to express our sincerest gratitude to the Government of Canada, the academic community, and their friends for joining us today to remember and celebrate the lives and achievements. My dearest Pedram, Mojgan, Daria, and Dorina, may you all have peace wherever you are. Your heartbroken sister and aunt, Elham Musavi. Thank you. Also here to honor the life of Pedram Musavi are Pedram's close friends, Brian Fleck and Reza Nasseri. Good evening. I'm really, my name is Rosa Nasri. Together with Pedram and Morgan, Brian Fleck, and Pedram's bright team, who are here, most likely, among us, we tried to commercialize wireless sensor technology for a couple of years. I'm here to pay my respect and honor their legacy, as well as all the other students, all researchers from University of Alberta and other universities that were on that flight. My heart also goes to all the people that were on, that, on board with them. Like Pedram and Mojgan, I'm an electrical engineer who emigrated to, from Iran, who came to Canada to pursue my dream and was accepted with open arms. I'm lucky to have had that opportunity to live in this wonderful and generous community. I know very well the enormous loss of talent and intellect that we have lost. Mojgan, Pedram, and their two children, and all the bright young people who are not among us today, had so much to offer and contribute to our community and to the world. We miss them greatly. They will always be in our thoughts. I'll just let Brian to continue with them. 
Hi, uh, my name is Brian Fleck, and I work with Pedram and Mojgan. Uh, I was the chair of the Department of Mechanical Engineering when we hired Pedram, and I was very proud to have done so. Like so many of you here, I spent time with them, enjoyed parties at their home where we ate, joked, sang, I know some of you here remember that, and we dreamed together. I felt flattered at how many times each of them came to me for advice because they were so eager to learn and grow their professional network. They were really, really eager to be uh, important contributors to this province. The girls, Doreen and Daria, who both, by the way, followed their mother's taste for exquisite footwear, took care of our family dogs. Their parents wanted to nurture that caring spirit. I know here today some of you had similar experiences and can speak for the enduring imprint this family has had and has left on us now that their lives are complete. So many of us knew firsthand their indefatigable spirit, energy, and determination. Many of us as engineers wondered if somehow that family was breaking the laws of physics and the conservation of energy principle with their endless positive drive. Nobody went by either of them in the halls without sharing a smile a joke or interesting or sometimes sarcastic comment. What you might not know though was how important their family was and their heritage was to both of them. Pedram often told me how important it was to make his family proud of him. On that I'm sure they were successful. He would say to me, I don't care what I get in my annual evaluation, I just want to make Mojgan's mum proud of me. Some of the women on our faculty have told me what a strong role model Mojgan was for women in engineering. A devoted academic mother and wife. I remember once she said to me, you just have to work much harder than men. So I can easily imagine her as one of those we can do it posters, but Mojgan would have that great big smile on her face. They both felt strongly about their duty to educate younger scholars. They were working on cutting edge technology and putting Alberta on the map in wireless communication. For those of you who are here right now who can carry on with their legacies, you know who you are. They both would want you to recover from this loss and go forward with renewed and greater determination. Together they set an extraordinary example for you. Let us be grateful for the gifts, their lasting contributions, and try to emulate their positive energy and spirit. Also here for Pedram Musavi are Dr. Safavi and Dr. Mahdi Tawakoli. Thank you. It's uh, so difficult for me to talk, but Pedram, my closest and dearest friend for about uh, more than 25 years. Uh, Pedram joined my, my research group at University of Waterloo uh, right after his graduation from the uh, Professor Lachafai in actually Winnipeg. Actually, I needed someone very strong because we had actually, lots of problems in our lab. And Pedram came to our, to, to our group. Memories are very vivid for the first meeting that he came to my office. He used to call me doctor. And the first question, that's exactly his first question, asked me, doctor, what's the most difficult problem you have? I want to work on that. Of course, I always have a long list of most difficult problems. And at that time, the most difficult problem was, was a very, very, a very miniaturized, highly active antenna, very low cost that could be used for, for satellite communication, mobile satcom for Canada, of course, very important. And just said, I love it. I thought, okay, I'll be my guest. And he did excellent, that work. In fact, the work was so important that uh, we actually developed the first low-cost uh, mobile sat antenna in Canada, mainly during to the huge effort of Petra. And in fact, uh, still I have one of those uh, 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 samples in our lab, that was about 10 years ago, but still that actually amazes the visitor to our lab. 
And Pedram continued to actually uh, hugely, hugely, significantly uh, contribute to in fact, many, many other uh, projects we had. That actually, the work that he started uh, in fact, extended into a, perhaps the most extensive research program in Canada, actually academic research program in Canada in, in active internet technology. And based on that, we actually built, we established perhaps a world-class center of intelligent internet or in Waterloo. And, and, and Pedram was really instrumental to make all this happen. And uh, when we, I, I really we work hard to, to, to actually keep, keep him at Waterloo. <clears throat> So, so anyway, when he, when he joined, joined Alberta, we had continued our research. And of course, that goes back to, uh, so, we, so he, he actually stayed with us for about a decade or 12 years, very productive 12 years. And we continued our collaboration, our, our, our research work together after he joined uh, here. And we, uh, uh, and th that continued. In fact, uh, uh, Pedram and Mojgan both were a great asset in our department. They were always ready to help. I should say that on personal aspect, and I, that was mentioned by other speaker, that Pedram, and that was very unique, Pedram and Mojgan, they actually love each other. And in many, actually in many cases, jokingly, they're introduced to the newcomer as girlfriend and boyfriend, long-term girlfriend, uh, boyfriend. And both experts in electromagnetics, we called them many, many funny names, for example, dipole antenna, or, or couple electromagnetic field and so on. So this, it was, there were, there were just stars actually in our, in those days. And, uh, and, and, and uh, so I think for, to, to the student and researcher, as I said before, the best way to, uh, to, to in fact continue uh, to actually make their memory live forever is to practice, to actually apply what you have learned from them the values, the, 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 the theory, their thoughts, uh, their manner, apply them in your life. That's the only way that Pedram and Mojgan can live through you forever. God bless them. God bless all, the, all, all this very, very precious 176 life that were lost. I really blame the situation in the Middle East. It's, it's not really any particular thing. And I, I, I hope that in the future we can actually uh, resolve these issues that we have there. I, I, just, I can just blame them. And also, I, I really uh, hope that God will, uh, will, uh, will give us strength and patience, especially to his, to his mom, to his dad, to all of us who love them and miss them so dearly, to, uh, to continue. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I was hired by the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the same time as Dr. Mujgan Danishman. On behalf of my Iranian-Canadian academic colleagues, I'd like to thank the U of A community, Edmontonians, and each and every one of you for your overwhelmingly supportive and heartwarming response in the face of this unthinkable tragedy. Your never-ending support reminds me of the 11th century Persian poet Saadi Shirazi who said so elegantly, human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. As someone who moved to Canada 19 years ago today, I feel truly indebted to Canada and to Canadians for your, for our hospitality kindness, and open hearts. People are as strong as the community they live in. And those of us with an Iranian heritage crave the opportunity to give back to our dearest Canada. We are thrilled when we have the opportunity to demonstrate our appreciation to our neighbors, our friends, and our community by working hard and by contributing to this society. Dr. Danishman and Dr. Musavi were two vivid examples of this special bond. They displayed the finest, the sweetest, and the most beautiful of Iranian culture. They were always there to help and take a hand. 
full of energy and joy, full of optimism and hope, full of laughter and humor, and full of patience and respect for others. This sweet couple was more than supervisors to their students. One of Mojgan's students put it so beautifully. Mojgan was just like a mother, and Pedro was just like a father. The U of A students and alumni who perished on this flight were equally promising and beam, beaming beacons of light in the Iranian Canadian community. We mourn this loss and we do so together. We are in this together. Our hearts are united. The 12th century Persian poet Hafiz says, چراغ افروز چشم ما نسیم زلف جانان است مباد این جمع را یارب غم از باد پریشانی حافظ says unity and compassion give the very light that brightens our path forward in spite of withering winds of darkness this unity and compassion is a gift our community is so blessed to have. Thank you so much. Also here for Pedram Musavi are Pedram's friends, Nader Behdad and Hossein Saglatun. Good evening, everybody. My name is Hossein Saklatun. I am a former PhD student of Professor Musavi. Uh, I graduated a few months ago, and after my graduation, uh, I studied his group as a postdoctoral flow. Uh, Professor Nader Behtad from University of Wisconsin uh, couldn't attend this ceremony, so he personally asked me to, to read his letter on, on his behalf. Dear friends, I'd like to give my condolences to all friends, compatriots, and all who's lost friends and loved ones in this tragedy. I also lost a dear friend and, and his family in this incident and like to read a letter here that I wrote for him. May the universe convey my thoughts and feelings to him. Dear Pedro, I spent most of last Wednesday crying and mourning for you, Moishgan, Daria, and Dorina and the tears still keep coming. I can't hold back my tears any time I see your pictures or think of you. I can't even stop crying as I write this letter. Hearing the news of your untimely passing along with your dear family hit me really hard. I had not sobbed so this hard since my grandfather passed away 32 years ago in a fatal car accident when I was only like 10 years old. But hearing about this tragedy was harder, much harder indeed. The sorrow of losing you, Mojgan, and your beautiful angels in this horrible manner is just too much to bear. I cannot stop thinking of what you, what you all were going through after the missiles hit your plane. I cannot stop thinking about what your family and what Mojgan's family are going through right now, and I cannot help but to cry when I do. They took you away from us too soon. Petram, your friendship meant a lot to me. We had some real good times together and many, many good memories. I will never forget your constantly smiley face. I was, I was looking forward to more good times and many more, more mem memorable moments together. But alas, the cruel hands of destiny had some other plans. I will always cherish th those good memories. You, you all will always be in my heart and thoughts. I have always hoped that there's another life after this one. This hope is not to because of going to heaven or having an everlasting life. It is only because there, there may be one more chance to see my departed loved ones again. Now, sadly, I have four more reasons for hoping so. So until we meet again, rest in peace, my dear friend, your friend, Nader. Now I want to share a few words from everyone who worked with Pedram as students, 
uh, or researcher. I am here today on behalf of everyone from the Intelligent Wireless Technology Lab and those who had uh, Pedram as their supervisor. I've known Pedram for almost six years since I started my PhD studies here at the University of Alberta in 2014. To all of us, he was more than just a supervisor. He was a sweet, honest, hardworking, and caring man. He genuinely was like a father to us. He always, he always made sure we are taken care of, financially, emotionally, and professionally. He was a role model for us, someone we aspired to become, especially as a successful immigrant to Canada at the pinnacle of his career. In recent years, he provided us with all the resources we needed to do our jobs in the best way. He was among a few professors we have come to know over recent years who have been able to, in to integrate theoretical knowledge and experiments and evolve them into commercial products during a relatively short time. He believed that our work in the university should lead to a product that would make lives better and devoted all of his life to this without weekends or timeouts. This unspeakable tragedy has devastated us on a deep emotional level and left us with overwhelming sorrow. From, from, the, day he, from the day he left our lives, we all felt a tremendous void in our hearts. Not only have we lost a genuine friend, a caring boss, a role model, but he have also lost an incredible father. University of Alberta, Edmonton, and Canada will feel his absence forever. He always treated us as his partner, friend, and family, and reminded that the true friendship is what matters at the end of the day. He left behind a legacy, one of overcoming tremendous ob obstacles, hard work, perseverance, and at most commitment to your potentials. He paved the way for us as newcomers to Canada, as engineers, and as researchers. As a person who was fortunate to be his student, his friend, and his colleague, I want to promise you, my dear Pedram, that I will devote my life to, honor it, to honoring your legacy. I will truly be honored if I could even be a quarter of the virtuous man that he was, forever rest in peace, our beloved father and boss, Pedro Musabi. Here to honor the life of Mujgan Danishmand, Professor of Electrical Engineering, is Dr. Rafat Mansour. Good evening, everyone. In 2002, a young lady came to my office at the University of Waterloo asking if she can talk to me. She introduced herself as Mojgan Danishman. She said, I have recently moved to Waterloo with my husband, who started a new job at Waterloo. I have a master's degree from University of Manitoba, and I'm interested to join your research group as a PhD student. And right away, she handed me her CV. I told her, listen, PhD, is four or five year commitment. You need to make sure that you are up to this commitment. I asked her to think carefully about that and come to see me in two weeks. She came in two weeks and she said, I'm committed. It is my dream to have a PhD degree. I told her, okay, I will hire you first for four months as a research assistant so I can see your research abilities before accepting you in the PhD program. After, after dealing with her for one month, it was quite clear to me that she has what it takes to be an excellent PhD student 
and I accepted her formally in the PhD program under my supervision at the University of Waterloo. During her PhD program, she had many achievements in terms of publishing papers and receiving awards. She received an NSERC scholarship during the PhD program and an NSERC uh, uh, postdoctoral fellowship. And uh, in total, uh, Mojgen spent with me seven years, five years as a PhD student and two years as a postdoctoral fellow. There, are very, there is a very unique story about Mojgen happened in the last year of her PhD program. I would like to share this story with you. Mojgen was pregnant with her first baby in 2006. Everything was okay. So we scheduled the PhD final defense at month seven, two months before the delivery of the baby. Just one day, just one day before the PhD defense, Pedram called me to say, Mojgan is in the hospital and the baby is being delivered. So I had quickly to call the external examiner, he was from US, to tell him to cancel the trip because of the circumstances and we will hold the PhD defense in three months later. Mojgen delivered her first beautiful daughter, Dahlia, and we did the defense three months later. Since leaving the University of Waterloo and joining the University of Alberta, I have been in constant contact with Mojgen. I was so proud of her success at the University of Alberta, where she, receive, she received the prestigious Canada Research Chair and built a sizable, strong research group in a very short time. There is a very tough IEEE conference in our area. Both of us submit papers to this conference. Every year, we challenge each other who gets more papers in this conference. I used to challenge her saying, there is no way you can beat me. Yet she managed to beat me a few years with having more papers in that conference. The last, the last time I talked to Mojgan was early December, few years, few days before her travel to Tehran. I was going to nominate her for the IEEE Fellowship. This is the highest technical award every engineering professor is looking forward to have. We were discussing her application and we agreed she will work out description of her publication and email it to me. The last email I got from her was January 6th, this month, just one day before the ill-fated flight. She was so happy that her research group got 18 conference and journal papers in 2019, 18 papers in one year. Perhaps that was the last email she wrote. Those of us who dealt with Mojgan and Pedram know her kind, know how kind they are. I can, let me speak just a few words to describe the character of Mojgan. After the accident, I received many condolences, email and phone calls from many people and colleagues in our field who dealt with Mojgan and who know that she was my PhD student. Let me read just three and four statement made in those emails about Mojgan. A colleague from US sent a message saying, Mojgan always represents a great energy, enthusiasm, and sense of human, humor and humility. A lady from our ECE department at the University of Waterloo sent me a message, a message saying, I remembered both of them very well when I saw the photo. I adored Mojgan. She was always so kind, sweet and warm. Another lady from our department said they were both always smiling. A colleague professor from Canadian University sent me this message saying, 
I will always remember laughing with Mojgan at the IMS conference meetings. She was an inspiration to many researchers and students. I had just recently assigned one of my students to read her censor papers and implement some of her ideas. It is tragic loss to the Canadian electromagnetic community and the entire research community and to Canada. When a student usually write the acknowledgement section in their PhD thesis, many of them usually write nice statement about their supervisors, just to please them. And one of the common statements which many students write, I am honored to be his student. Mojgan wrote this statement in her thesis. I would like to end my talk to talking to Mojgan. Mojgan, I am the one who is really honored to work with a talented and so kind person like yourself all this year. You will be always remembered. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Darya Musavi, daughter to Mojgan and Pedram, is Darya's friend, Ghazal Pakseresht. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a beloved passenger on the Ukrainian plane crash. Her name was Daria, a 14-year-old girl who left us too soon. She was the daughter of two beloved professors of the U of A, Mojgan and Pedram. She will always be loved. What really hurts is knowing she only lived 14 years. She wasn't able to live her complete life to follow her future path. She never got to fall in love, get married, have kids, and grow old. In life, we don't realize how important someone is to us until they're no longer with us. We don't cherish every moment with our loved ones. And when you lose them, you realize you will never see or talk to them again. So please cherish moments with your loved ones. Me and Daria went to Persian school together, here in Edmonton. She was very lovely and kind. She was an amazing girl who deserved more. She didn't deserve to leave this world. I can't possibly imagine what it was like for her on that plane, what her last thoughts were before the plane crashed. We can't bring back our beloved Daria, but we can only hope she's in a better place now. I hope she rests happily amongst her family in heaven. Daria has left us, but her heart and soul will always be with us. And her kindness and amazing personality will never be forgotten. Here's a poem from my heart to Daria's. She will be remembered. She will be loved. Daria, like an ocean, you moved with a kind motion. You brought joy to this world. Your heart and soul will never be sold. I hope you rest happily in heaven. Daria, we will miss you. We hope they didn't die in vain. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Dorina Musavi, daughter to Mojgan and Pedram, are Maryam Hejazi and Amir Qahari. These days, every time we pass by the soccer gear in our garage, the first thing that comes to our head is Dorina's face. Um, myself and my husband 
started Grow Rigger soccer team last summer. And after we advertised within the community, Dorina's mom, Mojgan, contacted us, and we ended up registering her in our team. I'm sure all, all, are, all you are interested in knowing about, a bit about her. What comes to my mind is her strong sense of curiosity that I think she got it, she got the genes from her scientist parents, Mojgan and Pedram. I remember the first practice when all the girls showed up, we had a safety moment explaining where the master point is in the case of emergency. And Dorina started asking questions about the details from the beginning, which turned the supposed to be one minute long safety moment into a 10 minute one. Hi everyone, I'd like to share with you my uh, story with Dorina that I will remember for the rest of my life. She was just turning 10. So we had warm ups before each practice and uh, the girls would start running and doing stretches with Maryam and uh, while I was organizing the drills. There was this time uh, that the warm up had already started and Dorina arrived with a lollipop, eating a lollipop, and I was like, Dorina, toss that out and let's get, get into practice, let's go running. Time to practice and uh, she goes, Coach Amir, I need sugar. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fair enough. When I first started getting involved in soccer here in Edmonton, the opportunities available for women in sports struck me because, because of the huge difference from where I grew up prior to choosing Canada home. That made us think about starting the first uh, girls soccer team uh, for the Iranian community in Edmonton League. Because of that, because of the extent of this tragedy, we are determined and would love to create a permanent legacy of Dorina by establishing Dorina Soccer Club here at home. Thank you. Also here to honor the life of Mojgan Danishmand is Mojgan's research assistant, Mohammad Abdul Razaghi. Friends, families, and special guests, thank you for being here. My name is Mohammad and I was a research assistant and graduate student of Professor Mojgan Danishmand. And I'm here speaking with and on behalf of her entire research group. Mojgan was our supervisor, but to each of us, she was so much more than that. Mojgan was a pillar in each of our lives. And with her gone, every one of us feels an endless emptiness that is indescribable. We, rece we received a fair share of her positivity, wittiness, energy, and encouragement all the time that made us all grow into better people. And it is difficult to imagine our lives without her. Mojgan had a willingness to see more than just a number of papers or a GPA behind a student, but to see what their real potential could be. And she guided us well beyond what we could find possible within ourselves. Especially her deep support for young women involved in engineering was always inspirational and she was a powerful role model for women pursuing their dreams in technology. She treated each of us individuals. While making decisions, she always sought to put her students' interest prior to her own and let them have unlimited access to her resources. I came to know that not only had she supported quite a few students building their careers through her advice and warm attitude, but that many professors have become equally grateful to her. Looking back, I honestly cannot remember a time when she was in a bad mood, but 
but always unshakably patient. And I do not know anyone with his smile as lively and big as Mojgan's. She was almost perfect, but not fully perfect. Her pool game could use some improvement. Over the last few days, when we have all been thinking about the last time we spoke with her, the last time we heard her laugh, the last time we saw her smile, or heard her favorite greeting, hello sir, in my last phone call to her on New Year's Eve, where the past few days were really tough on me finishing some recent work, she was super excited about it and said, I'll hope to see this energy again once I'm back. And I then made a joke saying, do you mean I have to carry all the energy over from 2019 into 2020 as well? Isn't it going to be left behind in the past decade? She laughed. And I never thought it would be the last one I would hear. And then I hung up. It was 2020. The world has lost a brilliant mind. Her family a dear and loving daughter and sister. University of Alberta, an exceptional professor. And we all lost a dear lifetime companion. In her stead, Mojgan has left herself in the lives of many people. I see her warmth and love towards her family and her mom. I see her compassion towards students reflected in those she touched. And I see her drive for a diverse, intense, and exciting education in all scholars whose lives at the University of Alberta she guided. As a graduate student who recently completed my degree with Mojgan's name shining up my thesis, I had a chance to say to her, Thank you. While many others did not, they still want to say, thank you, Mojgan, for everything. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Shukufe Chupan Nejad is Shukufe's friend, Mojgan Ghafari. Thank you to everyone who has come out to pay tribute to the people our community has lost. My name is Yekta, and I'm here to talk in regards to Sara and Saba. I think the toughest thing about writing these speeches are, how do you summarize such amazing souls these people were in just a few words? How do you summarize what impact they left on your life? I know however much I say right now will never come close to describing what wonderful people Sara and Saba were, but whether you knew them directly or indirectly, you have seen or heard about them, heard of the stories of their successes and of their youth youthfulness. Sara and Saba were sisters, but above all, they were the bestest of friends. They cared immensely about each other's welfare and they were with each other always. Through love, through sadness, and also through death. It brings me some comfort to know that they had each other in those last moments. I will leave you with a dear memory of mine. It was May 2017. I had been experiencing difficulty with my sister, Nikta. Sara and Saba, Nikta and I called ourselves Jigars, which in Farsi, it means liver, but it's actually a compliment. <laughs> Anywho, we were a squad. Upon realizing the extent of the feud between my sister and I, they made it their mission to get us to make up. We all sat in the car, they locked the doors, and consistently told us about the importance of siblings and how we were so lucky to have each other. We didn't leave that night until our bond was restored. They were much more than friends to me. They were family. Regardless of what you believe comes after death, I know Sara and Saba will live on within me. I will keep them in my memory and I will make sure that I accomplish what they always wished I had. At every opportunity, I will make sure to pay tribute to their name. That is the least I can do for such young, bright minds. Thank you. Hello, 
today I am talking about Dr. Shekufe Chupanejad and sharing my story, The Eternal Transit. It was year 2014 when I met Shekufe and her two lovely daughters. It was at a gathering. They were so warm and welcoming that they became our family friend very soon. Shekufe was a gynecologist and they had moved to Edmonton from Nova Scotia in order to obtain a license for her practice. Shekufe was very skilled and talented. She passed practice ready assessment and then worked in multiple clinics and a hospital in Camrose. She was preparing herself since the last months to complete Royal College Board exam that was dated for Fe April 2020. Shekufe was a highly professional medical doctor and at the same time a good mother for her children. Her life was to provide everything for her children. Also, she was a very kind friend and she was always laughing and everybody who knows her remembers her laughter. 21st of October 2019 marks the day of a gathering. On this day, Shekufe told me that for Christmas holidays, they are traveling to Iran. I asked her, with which airline? She said, Ukraine airline. I told her, my brother-in-law traveled with them and they had long transit hours. She checked at the, that time and told me that the transit was only three hours. However, she did not know it would be an eternal transit instead. In December, we were in touch again. She told me she was departing on the 22nd of December. I asked for the return date and she said January 9th. On January 7th, it was 8 p.m. that we were speaking to my brother-in-law on the phone. He said, did you hear about the plane crash of the Ukraine airline? I responded immediately by asking, where was the flight coming from and where was it going? He responded, Tehran to Kiev. I tried to give myself reassurance that no, Shekufe said her return was 9th of January. I reacted by calling Sara and Shekufe's WhatsApp. Sara's was ringing. I got in touch with other friends and family whom confirmed that our loved ones were indeed on that flight. That night we were not able to sleep morning, sleep. Morning of January 8, 7.30 a.m., my phone was ringing and it said, Sara saw that. I thought to myself, God, is this a miracle? Maybe Sara was not on that flight. I picked up my cell and heard a man say, you called me last night. That day, without being able to believe the unfortunate events, I was thinking about the crash. Maybe it was all a scary nightmare and I will wake up with no incidents occurring. But unfortunately, these events did happen. We lost loved and dear friends to an eternal transit. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Sabo Saudat, undergraduate student in biological sciences, is Sabo's boyfriend, Daniel Gotz. Often in life, we are overwhelmed with challenges and difficulties. It feels like we have been thrown into a deep, dark tunnel, not knowing where we're headed. Until a single glimpse of light appears. It begins to provide some sense of clarity until you know where you're headed. Things start to make sense. Saba was this light for me. Saba was a dedicated student described by her research supervisor as a PhD student disguised as an undergraduate. Her experience with immigration fueled her passion towards being a voice for marginalized groups. She was a mentor in our community, working with children of newcomer families to ease the transition that comes with immigration. 
Family was a key part of Saba's identity. This stems from seeing the work ethic of her family, spe speci specifically her mother Shekufet. When they first moved here to Canada, she was working to provide for her two daughters and her son while studying to obtain her license to practice as an obstetrician gynecologist. Based on her interactions, my mother described Saba and Sara as two lionesses, the way they stood behind their family. Saba's love for her family was a trait that I admired and looked forward to partaking in. Next, I would like to share a story with everyone that highlights how caring of a person Saba was. In my third year of my undergraduate degree, my parents had gone to Iran to visit for two months. I'm an only child and this was my first experience being at home alone and to be fully honest, I was very nervous about it. On top of that, I got scheduled to receive surgery as I had some problem with my nose and sinuses. Not having my parents here, Saba stepped up to be my support. I remember on the day of my surgery, she picked me up early in the morning and drove me to the Leduc Hospital. She sat with me in the pre-operation area and her smiling face was the first thing I saw once the anesthetic wore off. Saba took care of me the days following my surgery and looking back, she had made a stressful situation in a stressful time one of the most memorable and happy experiences of my life. Saba has influenced the heart of minds of anyone who had the honor of knowing her. So I stand before you with this message. In this world that we live in, it is easy to become desensitized to the tragedies going on around us. I ask everyone to maintain their humanity and be kind to one another. Say hi to your neighbor and ask your friends how they're feeling from time to time. Our lives are not just numbers in an ideological pursuit. Please do not forget Saba and do not forget those who've lost their lives in this tragic event. Thank you. I would now like to invite Dr. Fraser Forbes, Dean of Engineering, to speak about the Mojgan Danishman, Pedro Musavi, and victims of flight PS752 Memorial Fund. I was asked uh, a few days ago to speak to you about a, a, an important initiative that um, the leaders of our Iranian Canadian community um, hold dear to them. But first I'd like to thank you for coming together over the past few days to share in grieving and to support each other through a devastating time. Earlier this week was the first time I heard uh, uh, the, the folks on, on flight uh, on flight described as beacons of light. But you've heard it again over and over this afternoon. These people were dedicated to building a better Edmonton, Alberta, Canada and world. It now falls to each of us to continue to build an enduring legacy. And there's no better way to do so than to provide the opportunity for others, future generations, to become beacons of light. To this end, our Iranian-Canadian community has championed the creation of a foundational scholarship fund which will enable brilliant young people to benefit from a Canadian education here at the University of Alberta and to continue to strengthen Canadian-Iranian cultural ties. Our ambition, or our ambitious goal, is to sustain two $20,000 per, per year scholarships through a $1 million endowment. This will guarantee the lasting legacy of those who perished uh, on flight PS752. Now I know as Albertans, as Edmontonians, as Canadians, we can do this together. So I'm asking each of you as individuals, community leaders, senior government officials, and members of the academy to help us to enable the next generation of beacons of light by supporting this endowment. Thank you. Here to honor the lives of both Arash Purzarabi and Pune Gorji, graduate students in computing science, is their close friend, Amir Furuzande.
I'm here on behalf of some close friends that Arash and Pune had in Edmonton. I'd like to acknowledge that Pune's family, Arash's family, as well as their close friends could, could not be here with us today. As many of you might know, Arash and Pune celebrated their wedding in Iran with their families and friends on January 1st. You know, they were planning to have a small ceremony with their close friends when they got back here in Edmonton. Today could have been the day and we would have gathered to celebrate their love instead of mourning their loss. And instead of reading this, I would be making a toast to them, their love and the wonderful journey ahead of them. When someone passes away, you always hear how kind they were, how brilliant they were. It almost sounds like a cliche, but Arash and Pune were the kindest people I have ever met. They really were. Always smiling, always caring about their friends, making sure everyone's fine, they had this calming effect, which I cannot really explain, but you could feel it whenever they were present. Whenever we would hang out, Pune would make sure everyone's having a good time. No one felt left out, ever. If you were even a little upset, you couldn't hide it from Pune. She knew all the right questions to ask, and she had all the right answers too. She knew how to make you feel better, and it wasn't just her friends. She genuinely cared about people, wanting everyone to be happy. Arash was like the, the, the dad of the group. Whenever we were all together, he would make sure everyone's comfortable, having fun. If there was something that he could help, help with, he would be sure to count on him, that he would always be there for you. I cannot remember Arash being mad, or, mad at or even upset with anyone, ever. He was always calm and collected, which helped us be, be calm as well. It is an irony that the people who would always talk to us to calm us down and make us feel better are not here for us right now in the darkest days of our lives. Our Hashem Pune were full of life, always excited about trying new things. It could be about reading a new book, watching a show, or trying out a new sport that they had never played before. It wasn't difficult to get them excited about something. I remember it was the best thing watching Pune's reaction when we surprised her for her birthday. We used to joke that from now on, no matter whose birthday it is, we're just giving a gift to Pune instead. They were both very excited about their research projects and their work as well. I remember Arash explaining to me what he was working on around the time that he started and he would dumb it down for me to understand. He was so passionate about it that, that it even got me excited. And the times that we were not making, uh, working, but we didn't, and, uh, we didn't get to hang out in person, Arash and uh, Fio was, would jump into this online video game where you could team up with your friends and talk online. It was a chance for us to talk and make jokes and basically spend time with each other. And the game itself was just like an excuse. There are so many things that remind us of them, so many memories. Everywhere we look, we see a part of them. In our homes, in the streets, in every little corner of our lives, we see Arash and Pune. We can't even open that, silly, open that silly video game anymore. There's just so much of them that we carry with ourselves in our everyday lives that can never be forgotten, and it never will be. The world has lost its colors. In the summer, we took a trip together to Bath National Park. We didn't know that it was gonna be our last trip together. Because the second night, we left for Golden, British Columbia. The place we were staying at had a nice fireplace. We sat by the fire and talked. We were trying to come up with different things that we could do, like a game to play or whether we should explore the town. But we ended up just talking by the fire, talking about different things that we want to do, what the future plans are for each of us, and then we are going to achieve these things. But after a while, we realized that no matter what we want to do or where we want to go, we want to have this, this group of people. Us being able to sit together by the fire and just talk. Pune actually suggested that we should get a big house and all of us move in and just live together. I remember actually looking, uh, looking up a few places that we could one day move into. A few months after it was Thanksgiving and we decided to cook a turkey at their place. We were not sure how and where to start, but we went out and got everything. Based on a few recipes that we had looked up, everyone had a task assigned to them. Arash and Pune were actually coordinating the whole thing. By the time we prepared the turkey and let it cook and then rest for a little bit, it was already one in the morning. <laughs> I think there might have been some miscalculations there. <laughs> but it didn't matter. We set the table, sat down together, and enjoyed that delicious meal. That night, we ended up talking for hours, as we usually did, all of us together and talking. But this time, since we didn't have a fireplace, Arash turned off the lights, played a fireplace video on YouTube, and put it on the TV. We realized we didn't need to buy a, we didn't need to buy a house together. We were already a family living in different apartments. There are no words that could describe how this loss feels. We are still in denial. We cannot believe that we will never hear them say hi to us. 
They had their own unique ways of saying hi, their voices, their tone, everything. Whenever we would go to their place, you knew what to expect at the door, depending on which one of them is there to, uh, waiting to greet you. Pune would pop her head out the door with the biggest smile on her face, saying hi. Excuse me. And Arash is standing back and welcoming you with that funny phrase, which I wish I could somehow translate into English. Their voices keep replaying in our heads every second. I cannot accept that I will never hear their voices again. I wish I could just talk to them once more, only once. That's all I want. All of us used to have these long discussions about what happens after we die. I have the answer now. I'm sure there is something. There is an afterlife where we all would meet again with both of them, this time waiting for us together at the door, saying hi to us like they always did. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Muhammad Mahdi Eliasi, mechanical engineering alumnus, is Muhammad's friend, Rafat Jami. I'm here to talk today about, uh, to speak about my good friend Muhammad al Yassi, who we lost in this terrible tragedy. I met him about four years ago when I started my master's at the University of Alberta. Uh, I remember the first day when I walked into my office uh, and I immediately noticed how he always had a smile on his face, even though he was completely behind on all his assignments and very stressed. Um, he was telling me how oh, you know, I have three, four assignments due after TA, and I'm like, why are you so happy about this? And he's like, I don't know, it's just a challenge. That's what he would always tell me. Um, in almost uh, no time, I realized he was a lot like me, uh, especially our crazy routines. Most people would be leaving the office at 5 p.m., but I'd tend to stay late, and he was always there too. As the months passed, he became someone I spent most of the hours of my day with, whether it was in the lab, whether it was in the office, or whether we were getting lunch together. We always talked about our research, our ideas, our relationships, our families, and the things we wanted to do in the future. I don't think there was a single thing we never talked about. Before I knew it, in a short time, he became one of my closest friends. If I went through every good thing about Muhammad, it would probably take me days. Muhammad spent a little over two years at the Laboratory of Turbulence in Mechanical Engineering at the U of A. He worked on optical systems and how to use them to measure uh, different types of fluid flows. Uh, anyone that's worked in our research group, they know it's not an easy thing. Um, he was a very strong researcher and he was full of innovative and bright ideas. During his masters, he not only spent time in the lab, but he was very big on helping out in the community. He helped new international students get settled here in Canada, helped out in donation drives and charities. I think it was one of his principles to give as much back uh, to the community as he could. Whether that was through his research or his spare time. After he finished his master's, Mohammed moved to Toronto to continue his research at the University of Toronto's uh, Institute of Aerospace Science as a part-time research assistant. He was always a dreamer, but what made him different is that he never stopped trying for his goals. In no time, Mohammed had begun his own startup company to help local farmers using his new innovative optical system. I received a phone call from him uh, early December when he told me he also wanted my help and that we could work together. And I told him I'd be happy to help him. And he said, yeah, I'm going on a trip to Iran. Uh, when I come back in January, uh, we can start working on it together right away. And I said, yeah, for sure. Um, despite being crazy busy with his part-time work, trying to get his startup running, he continued to support newcomers to Canada, 
He taught English to Syrian refugees. He also dedicated a lot of his time to the Paradise Charity Group, which provides basic necessities for less fortunate children. When Mohammed moved to Toronto, it was a hard transition for me, not seeing him every day anymore. Luckily, he still made a lot of time for me and he called me a lot. We even would visit each other a few times a year. He always had that same smile and he radiated the same positivity. I think everyone that knows him would know that. I missed him a lot when he moved, but it's nothing compared to the amount of loss I feel now. Both Muhammad's sisters and his brother-in-law reside here in Edmonton, and I can say uh, that the amount of the loss that his family feels is unimaginable. Muhammad left us too soon. Although he may not have completed all the dreams he set out for, the many positive impacts and contributions he made will live with us forever. I hope, Muhammad, your, fi your soul finds eternal peace. To Muhammad's fr family and friends, I extend my deepest condolences and prayers. I also give my condolences to all of you who are affected by the recent events. Muhammad, thank you for bringing joy, compassion, and positivity into my life. I'll always miss you, brother. Here to honor the life of Nassim Rahmani Far, graduate student in mechanical engineering, is Anahita Shokr. A video will be played for Nassim. Thank you. And I'm Nassim Rahmani Far's roommate and friend. Right now, I'm in Iran because our flights are canceled and we're waiting to see if we can find another flight to come back. Uh, but I really, really wanted to be in this beautiful ceremony with other friends of Nassim. But here I am, so I'd like to say a few words about Nassim. I knew her from before the time she moved to Edmonton in May 2019. It may seem like that it wasn't that long, but our friendship is something that I will never, ever forget. We had so many great memories. Uh, Nassim was the most hardworking person that I've ever seen. She loved her research. She loved what she was doing in the University of Alberta. She always talked about it. But a student with um, passion for her research was not her only side. She had a great social life. She was a painter. She was an artist. She was an athlete. We played basketball and volleyball every week in Pavilion. I remember the time she bought her ticket back to Iran. She was really excited and uh, she decided to surprise her family so she didn't tell them that uh, she was going back to Iran for Christmas. Uh, every morning when she woke up, she told me 20 days are left, 19 days are left. She was really, really excited. And I know she managed to surprise them, but as her mom said, she surprised them again the way she left. Uh, Nassim was a fantastic friend for me. She was always there for me when I needed her. She was a fun person to be around. Whenever she was there, we were happy, we were not bored. She always made us do fun things. She made us eat ice cream in the middle of the night when it was freezing cold. And once we took three buses to buy some nails to put our frame on the wall and we had so much fun during this time. I could always have fun when Nassim was around. Uh, Nassim's friend and classmate, Amir Hussein uh, Saidi Nia, was on that plane too and he was going to uh, start his PhD studies in the University of Alberta and uh, Nassim was so excited that he was uh, joining her here 
And I remember they talked all the time and that seemed told her everything whenever we went somewhere where we did something Nassim was telling Ami Hussein about it and uh, she told him uh, we are going to do all of these things again when you come here you're not missing anything don't worry it is really sad it breaks my heart that they are not going to do those things together Ami Hussein is never going to see Edmonton and all those plans are not going to happen. Nessie was a fantastic friend for us and we will never forget her. And I really don't know what I have to do in Edmonton without Nessie. I really don't know how I should come back and go to our apartment. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Sara Saadat, psychology alumna, is Sarah's friend, Rian Schweib. Thank you all for being here today. I am honored to stand here to tell you about the most beautiful person I have ever known. Sara graduated from the University of Alberta with a degree in psychology. Last year, she was accepted into Alliant University's PsyD program for clinical psychology, and I can't think of anyone more cut out for success in this field. She had a way to see through the darkness in people and find their light. She paid attention to her friends. She noticed when they were silently hurting and was by their side throughout every struggle. Sara put her loved ones first and put their happiness above everything. No matter how busy her life got, she made time to surprise you with a birthday cake or buy that Mother's or Father's Day gift or make that FaceTime call to a friend in need. Because she understood that the things in life that actually matter are the relationships we maintain with the people around us. Sara was put into our lives for a reason. Getting over this loss will be so hard to those who knew her because of how good she was to all of us. Sarah was the person who was always there for you. She was so kind and so selfless. She took care of me since the day I met her. She picked me up to go to university every day. She brought coffee to my doorstep when I had a final exam approaching, when her own final exam was the very next day. Every morning she asked me if I slept okay. When I was feeling down, she tried everything to make me feel better, even if we just drove around and listened to songs in her car. She looked after me so much, my mom started calling me her second mom. She was the container of joy that I turned to when I was sad, and the beacon of hope I looked for when I felt helpless. I want to end with some advice and values that Sarah had taught me throughout our time together. Don't be scared to talk about your feelings. Seek help when you feel lost. Never discriminate someone based on race, gender, sexuality, or age. If you see wrong in the world, speak up against it. Be vulnerable with friends and family. Tell them you love them. Tell them you miss them. Never give up on the people you cannot live without. Friends and family of Sara, I know we have lost someone irreplaceable. It doesn't even seem possible to begin to move on, but I'm hopeful that as time goes on and the pain has almost fully healed, we will be left with the rare beauty of knowing someone who loved us so purely. I pray to God, Sara, that you knew how much you were loved by everyone around you and how much you impacted the lives of the people lucky enough to call you a friend. Thank you. Here to honor the life of Elnaz Nabi'i, graduate student in the School of Business, is Elnaz's friend, Maryam Zakeri. Hi everyone, thank you for gathering here and for your time. I'm Maryam Elnaz's classmate at Alberta School of Business. I and Elnaz were in the same university in undergrad and I knew her from that time. We got closer when she got admitted to Alberta School of Business PhD program in spring 2018. Tell me the definition of unfair. Loss of such a brilliant, caring and kind person is still unbelievable for me. I really would like 
to talk about her and what I learned from her during that short period. However, to, due to limited time, I prefer to talk um, about her on behalf of her sister, Parisa. She's in Iran now, she couldn't make it to come here. She was an exceptionally talented woman from Zanjan, Iran, a brilliant graduate of electrical engineering and MBA programs from Sharif University of Technology. The term woman with big dreams, so big that the world looks so small in her eyes indeed. The ingenious woman who was successful at whatever she attempted. She set an example of courage and compassion, hoping to inspire everyone who knew her. Anyone knowing her is aware that she was a warm-hearted and loving person. As an extremely sociable person, she always knew how to make family and friends smile and bring them closer together. Whenever I was feeling down, she could easily put a grin on my face from ear to ear. Enlas always had a gorgeous smile on her face too, with a positive, fun-loving attitude. My sister was only 30 years old and had so much to live for. She spent a lot of time looking after me growing up throughout my whole life. She was caring and loving like a mother and strong and supportive like a father. She was taken from us unjustly while advocating justice her whole life. I do not want to leave such great moments in the past. I want them now, and I am more certain that we are together forever, closer than ever. Elnaz, you will be in our hearts forever. Each and every moment together and all the joyful reminiscences keep our hearts beating forever. Few days ago, we celebrated your 30th birthday. I wish the other world has better gifts for you. Rest in peace, lovely Elnaz. Not only Elnaz and I shared University of Alberta uh, as our graduate school, but we went to the same high school in Iran, Farzanegan. When, for the first time, we met uh, each other uh, at University of Alberta al almost after a decade, I instantly was touched by her kind heart and realized how deeply she cared about other people. To describe someone as very kind and innocent in Farsi, we say, she couldn't have even harmed an ant. As ants are very small and we unintentionally and constantly step on them. And it breaks my heart that I am describing her personality in past tense already. So soon, so young, so bright and so beautiful. The following words are from her husband, Javad, who is also a PhD student here at UAE, and he's now in Iran. Elnaz was a really kind person. She was always eager to learn and experience new things. She was very sensitive to injustice, and she always cared about Iranian people's well-being. She loved Canada, and she wanted to start a new life here. The beauty of Canada, in her viewpoint, was its multiculturalism. She always wanted to learn about other cultures and she appreciated that she had that opportunity in Canada. I wholeheartedly believe that she's right now and she's watching us. I really regret that I could not spend more time with her. I have lots of unforgettable memories with her, which recalling them makes me feel better. I miss her a lot. Thank you. To everyone who came forward today to share memories and honor the lives of those we have lost, thank you. You have our most heartfelt condolences, sympathy, and respect. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, families, colleagues, partners, loved ones, thank you for coming today. To the many, many dignitaries who were able to join us today, thank you. Your presence means a tremendous amount to all of us gathered here. Hundreds of volunteers and community members dedicated countless hours this week to organize today's memorial. To everyone who helped, you have our most sincere gratitude. This marks the end of the program. However, I invite everyone to stay, to share more memories and stories, and to remember and celebrate 
all those whom we have lost. There are memorial books outside for anyone who likes to write a few lines for our departed friends. Thank you. And you are watching special coverage here on CBC News Network of the vigil taking place right now at the Saville Community Sports Center at the University of Alberta. And we have been covering this memorial since the very beginning as we remember the 13 lives who had connections to the U of A and to the city of Edmonton who died on the Ukrainian Airlines flight that was brought down accidentally, unintendedly by Iranian missiles. I want to bring here with me Natasha Fatah. She's been uh, sitting alongside, you know, so many touching moments and, and so many heartfelt words. It was difficult at times to listen, but to know that they are sharing their grief so openly. And, you know, I want to share some words here. We heard family and friends share their thoughts, but we also saw a number of political leaders among them. The mayor of Edmonton, uh, Don Iveson, we heard uh, the prime minister, we heard the premier of Alberta. <clears throat> and to that, you know, some words I want to share here, uh, Don Iveson, the mayor, because he, he had some beautiful thoughts, including sharing the uh, words of the Persian poet Rumi. He said, goodbyes are only for those who love with their eyes, because for those who love with heart and soul, there is no such thing as separation. From the Prime Minister, he said that no words can ease the pain, the grief, the outrage. It is my sincere hope that you can find some comfort in knowing that all Canadians stand with you. And that was the heartfelt moment, but also the promise. We will not rest until there are answers. We will not rest until there is justice and accountability. And we know that the Prime Minister has been very open about his call to get Canadian investigators to Tehran to be a part of the investigation of what took place here. Um, but I want to share, I want to end here with Jason Kenney almost because he shared some beautiful words. Among them, he said that so much promise is now gone. And, and he said we should resolve to remember the people that have been lost as exemplars of Canadian virtues and to tell the world of the vast human potential that was erased by an epic demonstration of human folly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to that, we were talking all day about the lives that have been lost and the contributions that they were making, lives that were cut short and lives that held so much promise that now we're never going to know. No, it's so true, Michael, and especially in this world of academia, right? You got that sense of professors, members of faculty, students, in the world of sciences, in the world of contributing to a greater planet for everyone, not just for a better career for themselves, but how can we make the world more accessible? How can we make uh, the world more livable? How can we make a more peaceful and prosperous planet? And you know, you mentioned what um, so many of the dignitaries and politicians had to say, but we were both so struck by the poise mm -hmm. of those who spoke. People who've lost their siblings, their loved ones, a girlfriend, a, a parent. The, the, the am amount of elegance presented by the individuals, including a 14-year-old child who was talking about her friend she, who was lost on that flight and read a poem that she had written herself for her. With Just great incredible. composure, yeah. never breaking down. And, and to me, that was one of the most striking things. There were tears as people were holding back their emotions. But the fact that they found the strength and the determination to share what they're going through, to express their grief and to celebrate and lift these names up of people whose lives are now lost. It's so true. But that's not to say there weren't moments of real sweetness and joy. Mm -hmm. You use the mm -hmm. word. Some of this is so sweet to listen to. And, you know, there's a couple of moments that stood out for both of us, if I can review those, that I feel would really resonate with folks at home because you're, when you're talking about academia and these incredible achievements in the world of science, somehow it feels unattainable. They're, they're out of this world, I, I can't look up to them. But in other ways, these individuals were so vulnerable. And one story that struck me was the couple, um, Pune and Arash, who just got married on January 1st. Mm -hmm. They'd gone to Iran to get married and they were coming back. And one of their mutual friends talked about the fact that, hey, at the end of the day, they're new immigrants who've never experienced Thanksgiving before. <laughs> and so this group of Iranian friends here in Canada how do you cook a turkey? And both you and I smiled at each other. Because that's a, that's a common experience amongst new Canadians yeah. that have never, to your point, celebrated Thanksgiving before. But the beauty of, okay, this is home now. And in this home, we have turkey on Thanksgiving. We're going to figure it out. And it wasn't perfect. And I'm sure it didn't taste the way, you know, most Canadian families would have it. But they made it their own. And moments like that during the ceremony were so sweet. And then there was, there's also... 
the human connection. Yes, these are accomplished individuals, but um, Mohamed Alassi was someone who went to the University of Alberta and then transferred over to Toronto, where he continued his academic studies. But we heard from his friends that, you know, he continued to help new immigrants coming to the country of all different backgrounds, and he volunteered with Syrian refugees. This is not a man who speaks Arabic necessarily. He's not ethnically Syrian, but he knows the experience of a newcomer to a strange land, and he's trying to make it easier for others. English isn't his first language, and he's helping others learn English. The generosity of spirit, that's what we heard again and again. It was about the scientific accomplishments, Michael, but the accomplishments of the human spirit, of the generosity is just incredible. And the Canadian spirit yeah. as well. Because, yeah. you know, through this weekend, I've been talking to a number of people that are grieving lost friends and family, and they talk about how powerful it has been to see Canadians of all backgrounds stand with them, to stand with the Persian community to say that we share your grief. In fact, uh, Don Iveson, he said so in Farsi. He, he said that I share your pain and your sadness and I share in your grief. And he did so in Farsi. And when you heard the friends and family come together today, when they talk about their friends choosing this country because of the opportunities it presented, the diversity that it represented. They loved the multiculturalism. The, the one man who, who was a soccer coach said that when he came from Iran, he was amazed at the opportunities for young girls to play sport in this country. And so he wanted to carry on that legacy and name uh, of the young girl that was one of the young girls that was killed in this plane crash. Some very beautiful moments. And if People are wondering if this is just a, a moment for the Persian community. This is a moment for the Canadian country and, and the Canadian nation. And we're seeing that in so many of the words that have been shared, including what we heard in Edmonton. It's so true. And what was also so lovely was the degree of gratitude being expressed. We're so grateful to our Canadian neighbours, our non-Persian neighbors, to the Canadian government, to the members of the community that we have decided to adopt. People have chosen to come to this country. Thousands and thousands of people have chosen this country and they are the sense of this gratitude that yes, we bring all of our expertise and we're going to contribute so much, but we're so grateful that you've given us this space to do that. And I, I just felt the whole, all these vigils have been so elegant and particularly this one because we were fortunate enough to listen to all of it, to share so much of it and to have the prime minister of the country there to show the communities, all communities, not just the Persian community, I see you, we're all going through this together, we're grieving through this inexplicable horror together because it is a, a national horror, it's hard to understand how to move forward in a situation like this.